Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Doom 2016. You have the crucible, and with it the means to contain the power of the well. We have a plan to send you there. Vega will walk you through the process. This is my primary operating system. It is where I was created, and where my core processing unit is maintained. It takes approximately 2.4 terawatts of power to sustain my operational capabilities, but it has been decided that we can use that power to send you to the source of the portal. I will not survive the procedure and am unable to self-terminate, so I will walk you through the process. All interior and exterior facility doors have been secured. You will need to begin by finding a way in and disabling the security systems. The important takeaway there is that Vega will not survive this process. Oh, I can't believe I accidentally got here. This was not the intended uh, critical path route, and instead it was a secret one. Uh, so I'm going to try to record this today using my kind of foobar mouse. Which is, ooh, already giving me a few hiccups. It's on its way out. I have a new one coming, but it's not going to be here until Friday, which is why we had so many Final Fantasy IX episodes in a row. Uh, if this one happens to die on me a little bit, as it's want to do lately, uh, where we'll just kind of lose power every couple of minutes, we'll switch mouses. Mice. Each termination point is protected by an electrified field, but you should survive. Primary window, security network. The Doomslayer takes being electrocuted like a champ. Yeah, I have this, uh, this little cheapo Amazon Basics Bluetooth mouse that I usually use for my laptop, but in a pinch, I don't want to go like five... FF9 zero and not put a doom out, so in a pinch, I think it might get me through. I air controlled around the is that a haste or a berserk? I think it's berserk. Uh, there will be more to come in a second once I work my way back to it. So far, just a few hiccups on this mouse. It's trying to die, but mm, death won't quite take it yet. It's coming, though. Uh, also, just a quick note, I really think this level is nice. Not for any higher level game design reasons, uh, or because it's it's so much more fun than any of the other ones. I think it is quite a bit more hectic than anything so far. Oh, well, this... Hmm. I wonder if we're going to waste this Berserk power up. Also, mm, I'm going to have some words about this song in a minute. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's anything left now that we finally have the Berserk. Uh, the reason I think this level is nice is just really simply because of the color palette switch. There's a lot of nice soft blues in this level, and then the icy, uh, frigid exterior makes for some visual variety that I appreciate. Uh, Yeah, we messed that up quite a bit. Oh, there goes the mouse. Hold on. Oh, man. Yeah, I have to get the... Uh, the little cheapo shitty Amazon one out. Let's see how this does. Oh, yeah, I have to turn it on. Yeah, this level breaks up uh, some of the visual homogeneity, uh, which is just nice. Oh, and then, yeah, this is where the track really kicks in. Before, like, it's it's not a bad track at all. In fact, I quite like it. But when it's... Aw? Really? Is that it? It didn't even get a chance to get going. I think we hear more of this track later, though. I recommend destroying my coolant system first. This will accelerate the destabilization Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It... it Starts off kind of funky, kind of like a mid-2000s spy movie theme. 
It's really cool. And then it just evolves. It gets a lot harder and heavier. I'm not liking the feel of this mouse at all. Ugh. Ugh. It's lurching a lot. Which is not a quality I appreciate in a mouse, especially a mouse I'm using a Blade Doom with. Mmm. There is a chance I have to go back to the other one and just endure it being garbage. Like, ooh, look at that. Yeah, ugh. That's not, that doesn't feel good. Luckily, plugging uh, the dying mouse back in, unplugging and plugging it back in, I should say, um, that does seem to kind of take the defibs to it and, and get a little bit of life coursing back through it temporarily. Maybe they'll survive the episode. Yeah, I can't play with that Bluetooth mouse. It has a nasty problem where it just seems to hang and lurch. I'm guessing that's just... No way, that can't just be being wireless. That's because it's a shitty mouse that I usually only use uh, for my laptop. Oh, well, enough about that. We have one of my favorite fights in the game coming up pretty soon, but first we have a cooldown uh, where we are going to have to go and search for a blue key card. Should you find yourself caught in a level three deep contamination event, it is important that you can call a tier three and neither should you. In fact, we have two of the most intense fights in the game coming up back to back. I think in order to get to that blue keycard. A lot of the messages from uh, the holographic PA system, they're getting more and more on the nose. I think this is the level where we get the, uh, the weaponizing demons for a brighter tomorrow. All right. Now, oh. I was gonna say we have to watch the specters here, but that is a rough place to deal with them. All right, here's our key card. Uh, now we find our way back upstairs. That was pretty quick. I don't think this is the way forward necessarily, but ah, this is the way to the auto map and maybe a PDA or something. Access granted. Uh, way to <laughs> hello a Praetor token and something spawning right on me as I pick that up yeah, Even though this mouse is on it, the way out while it lives <laughs> while it draws breath <laughs> Anthropomorphizing the mouse a little bit too much uh, It's at least stable Yeah, there it is Oh, it's so on the nose now. Like, the core theme of this game. And just how scummy the UAC is. I mean, ordinarily. Yeah, I knew it. Let's get this guy out. Ordinarily, like, you have to dig for really how scummy they are, aside from what we get out of uh, Samuel Hayden in the beginning, but they just really beat you over the head with it uh, towards the end. Like, if you haven't read any of the codexes, seen how, like, they are weaponizing the demons, they are really going to remind you at this point. Okay, yeah, the music kicks in at the second one. Ah, uh, we can't avoid this, so we'll just charge ahead and kill whatever is in our path on the way to three and four. Like the pinky here, and the other one, and maybe even the cocker demon. So every time you destroy a, 
uh, coolant conduit, enemies will spawn. Every single time. And they will keep spawning if you do all of them in a row. So the easy way to do this is to destroy a conduit, deal with the spawns. The fun way to do it is to charge head first at all four of them and then deal with the flood of very strong enemies all at once. That's the fun way. And also that Berserk Power Up ran out at a very, very inopportune time. Wait, let's help that thought. It doesn't matter. We're still doing this the fun way. I refuse to destroy one and deal with one wave of enemies and, and just do that over and over. I want this room teeming with demons. I want it coated in demon viscera by the end of this. This is what makes this one of my favorite fights because you can do this. You can take this optional challenge and it's fun as hell. Oh, buddy, you jumped down at a bad, bad time. Alright, so we get up here. Also, just the layout of this arena is terrific. And what they give you here and how many enemies. You can really feel the end game approaching. Pinky charged headlong into my Berserker fists. <laughs> yes, this time we got the summoner during the Berserker uh, power ups. That's going to make all the difference in the world. Oh, they're just... Oh, that's a Baron of Hell. Cool. They're really just crowding me as I try to destroy this extra conduit. Which, that's great. Great for me. Get more summoners. The summoner was a big problem last time. They're, uh, that projectile they do is unbelievably damaging. We haven't gotten hit by it that many times throughout this Let's Play, but... Ooh. It is not something that you ever want to be face tanking. Look at this. Look at the the enemies they throw at you at this point. That was at the end of that fight, at the exact same time, we had a Baron of Hell, a Summoner, and a Kaku Demon all at once. They are ramping up because they expect that you are well upgraded, you are well furnished with ammo at this point, and that you are accustomed to how this plays by now. Oh, I thought I made a mistake! I did that jump blind! I was just letting the momentum carry me forward. Holy shit, that was cool! Wow. That was almost a tremendous mistake. Uh, and then immediately, we don't even get a lot of time to cool down from that last fight before we are into an even more difficult one. Because this one, you have no way to modulate the difficulty of this encounter. It's just, you arrive in the room and it is go time for like five minutes. This is already hairy really, really hairy, so we're going to use everything we have available to us, uh, including all the BFG ammo we've been bogarting. We didn't even bust the BFG out uh, in that last room. Yeah, that's good. We hate that Revenant right now. Really, really load that boy. This is a good time to bust this out. This will destroy a lot, and we have that ammo pickup ready for us. It's actually like two or three BFG ammo pickups in this room. God, this is a fun fight. Because they do not let you breathe whatsoever. And you really have to take advantage of everything. Oh, ho, ho, ho! Not only did I blind dodge the pinky by accident, I think the pinky also charged and hit the Kako Demon. So it's just, it is constant movement here. It's constant weapon switching. 
And they are throwing everything in the kitchen sink at you by now. Mmm! And it just gets so good. Yeah, I needed this. I've not been in the best mood today. Uh, this is a good pick-me-up. Good, cathartic, fun pick-me-up. Oh, there, this summoner. This summoner may very well be the death of me. If I can't track down... Okay, there's one Hell Wave. Assuming it's gonna move, maybe not. It's also got some bodyguards. Which I don't want to stupidly charge into, but I may not have much of an option. Yeah, I have to. Ooh! Gotta connect that. Yep. I think with the summoner gone, we are in decent shape. Yeah, let's hit it. Let's hit the gas. Fuck, this is so good! I think we may have been dead if we missed that. Okay. You need to so quickly appraise every situation and avail yourself of every one of your options. Like, that's one of the most fun things about it. Uh, about Doom and especially the later stages of Doom. Is how it demands that you think on your feet constantly and then the really rewarding and fun part of that is not only being successful because if you're successful that means you know that that you've uh, appraised all of your options really well but also that you're hitting all of these really really fun shots it's especially why i love the rocket launcher so much like when you're jumping around and moving this much and and climbing all of these all of these different vertical strata of the level and still hitting these direct rockets and just jibbing things. Ah, oh, it's so satisfying! Ooh, our spy movie music is back. The vacuum of energy will pull you back through to hell. We have your destination set to the well's location. Now use the crucible to power it down. access to the well without a fight. But I'm sure that's what you're looking for, isn't it? Yeah, Samuel Hayden knows us. Actually, it's not a mid-2000s spy movie soundtrack anymore. It's... God, this is dope looking. It's very metal. Uh, very cyberpunk looking, too. It's more like a... Uh, Kind of like an 80s action movie theme, or like the build-up to one. It's the building tension to uh to an action movie theme from the 80s. Did you catch that? We have a backup of Vega in one of those uh, Praetor suit chips. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one.